In quantum mechanics, the cochin specker theorem, also known as the bell cochin specker theorem, is a no go theorem proved by John S. Bell in 1966 and by Simon B. Cochin and Ernst Specker in 1967. It places certain constraints on the permissible types of hidden variable theories, which try to explain the apparent randomness of quantum mechanics as a deterministic model featuring hidden states. The version of the theorem proved by Cochin and Specker also gave an explicit example for this constraint in terms of a finite number of state vectors. The theorem is a complement to Bell's theorem to be distinguished from the Bell Cochin Specker theorem of this article. The theorem proves that there is a contradiction between two basic assumptions of the hidden variable theories intended to reproduce the results of quantum mechanics, that all hidden variables corresponding to quantum mechanical observables have definite values at any given time, and that the values of those variables are intrinsic and independent of the device used to measure them. The contradiction is caused by the fact that quantum mechanical observables need not be commutative. It turns out to be impossible to simultaneously embed all the commuting subalgebras of the algebra of these observables in one commutative algebra, assumed to represent the classical structure of the hidden variables theory, if the Hilbert space dimension is at least 3. The Cochin Specker proof demonstrates the impossibility that quantum mechanical observables represent elements of physical reality. More specifically, the theorem excludes hidden variable theories that require elements of physical reality to be non-contextual i.e. independent of the measurement arrangement. As succinctly worded by Isham and Butterfield, the Cochin-Specker theorem, "...asserts the impossibility of assigning values to all physical quantities whilst, at the same time, preserving the functional relations between them." History The Case theorem is an important step in the debate on the incompleteness of quantum mechanics, boosted in 1935 by the criticism of the Copenhagen assumption of completeness in the article by Einstein, Podolsky and Rosen, creating the so-called EPR paradox. This paradox is derived from the assumption that a quantum mechanical measurement result is generated in a deterministic way as a consequence of the existence of an element of physical reality assumed to be present before the measurement as a property of the microscopic object. In the EPR article it was assumed that the measured value of a quantum mechanical observable can play the role of such an element of physical reality. As a consequence of this metaphysical supposition, the EPR criticism was not taken very seriously by the majority of the physics community. Moreover, in his answer Bohr had pointed to an ambiguity in the EPR article, to the effect that it assumes the value of a quantum mechanical observable is non-contextual i.e. is independent of the measurement arrangement. Taking into account the contextuality stemming from the measurement arrangement would, according to Bohr, make obsolete the EPR reasoning. It was subsequently observed by Einstein that Bohr's reliance on contextuality implies nonlocality, spooky action at a distance, and that, in consequence, one would have to accept incompleteness if one wanted to avoid nonlocality. In the 1950s and 1960s, two lines of development were open for those not averse to metaphysics, both lines improving on a no go. Theorem presented by von Neumann, purporting to prove the impossibility of the hidden variable theories yielding the same results as quantum mechanics. First, Bohm developed an interpretation of quantum mechanics, generally accepted as a hidden variable theory underpinning quantum mechanics. The non-locality of Bohm's theory induced Bell to assume that quantum reality is non-local, and that probably only local hidden variable theories are in disagreement with quantum mechanics. More importantly, Bell managed to lift the problem from the level of metaphysics to physics by deriving an inequality, the Bell inequality, that is capable of being experimentally tested. A second line is the Cochin Specker one. The essential difference from Bell's approach is that the possibility of underpinning quantum mechanics by a hidden variable theory is dealt with independently of any reference to locality or non-locality, but instead a stronger restriction than locality is made, namely that hidden variables are exclusively associated with the quantum system being measured, none are associated with the measurement apparatus. This is called the assumption of non-contextuality. Contextuality is related here with incompatibility of quantum mechanical observables, incompatibility being associated with mutual exclusiveness of measurement arrangements. 
The cochin specker theorem states that no non-contextual hidden variable model can reproduce the predictions of quantum theory when the dimension of the Hilbert space is three or more. Bell published a proof of the cochin specker theorem in 1966, in an article which had been submitted to a journal earlier than his famous Bell inequality article, but was lost on an editor's desk for two years. Considerably simpler proofs than the cochin specker one were given later, amongst others, by Merman and by Perez. However, many simpler proofs only establish the theorem for Hilbert spaces of higher dimension, e.g., from dimension 4. The Kays theorem The Kays theorem explores whether it is possible to embed the set of quantum mechanical observables into a set of classical quantities, in spite of the fact that all classical quantities are mutually compatible. The first observation made in the cochin specker article is that this is possible in a trivial way, namely, by ignoring the algebraic structure of the set of quantum mechanical observables. Indeed, let pa ac be the probability that observable A has value ac, then the product pi A pa ac, taken over all possible observables A, is a valid joint probability distribution, yielding all probabilities of quantum mechanical observables by taking marginals. Cochin and Specker note that this joint probability distribution is not acceptable, however, since it ignores all correlations between the observables. Thus, in quantum mechanics A2 has value AC2 if A has value AC, implying that the values of A and A2 are highly correlated. More generally, it is required by Cochin and Specker that for an arbitrary function f the value v f a display style v big f math bf a big of observable f a display style f math bf a satisfies v f a equals f v a display style v big f math bf a big equals f big v math bf a big if A1 and A2 are compatible commensurable observables, then, by the same token, we should have the following two equalities V C 1 1 plus C 2 2 equals C 1 V A 1 plus c 2 v a 2 display style v c underscore 1 math bf a underscore 1 plus c underscore 2 math bf a underscore 2 equals c underscore 1 v math bf a underscore 1 plus c underscore 2 v math bf a underscore 2 c 1 display style c underscore 1 and c 2 display style c underscore 2 real and v a 1 a 2 equals v a 1 v a 2 display style v math bf a underscore 1 math bf a underscore 2 equals v math bf a underscore 1 v math bf a underscore 2 the first of these is a considerable weakening compared to von neumann's assumption that this equality should hold independently of whether a1 and a2 are compatible or incompatible Cochin and Specker were capable of proving that a value assignment is not possible even on the basis of these weaker assumptions. In order to do so, they restricted the observables to a special class, namely, so-called yes-no observables, having only values 0 and 1, corresponding to projection operators on the eigenvectors of certain orthogonal bases of a Hilbert space. As long as the Hilbert space is at least three-dimensional, they were able to find a set of 117 such projection operators, not allowing to attribute to each of them in an unambiguous way either value 0 or 1. 
Instead of the rather involved proof by Cochin and Specker, it is more illuminating to reproduce here one of the much simpler proofs given much later, which employs a lower number of projection operators, but only proves the theorem when the dimension of the Hilbert space is at least 4. It turns out that it is possible to obtain a similar result on the basis of a set of only 18 projection operators. In order to do so, it is sufficient to realize that if U1, U2, U3, and U4 are the four orthogonal vectors of an orthogonal basis in the four dimensional Hilbert space, then the projection operators P1, P2, P3, P4 on these vectors are all mutually commuting and, hence, correspond to compatible observables, allowing a simultaneous attribution of values 0 or 1. Since P one plus P two plus P three plus P four equals I Display style Math BF P underscore one plus Math BF P underscore two plus Math BF P underscore three plus Math BF P underscore four equals Math BF I It follows that V P one plus P two plus P three plus P four equals V I equals one. Display style V Math BF P underscore one plus Math BF P underscore two plus Math BF P underscore three plus Math BF P underscore four equals V Math BF I equals one. But since V P one plus P two plus P three plus P four equals V P one plus V P two plus V P three plus V P four Display style V Math BF P underscore one plus Math BF P underscore two plus Math BF P underscore three plus Math BF P underscore four equals V Math BF P underscore one plus V Math BF P underscore two plus V Math BF P underscore three plus V Math BF P underscore four. It follows from V P I Display style V Math BF P underscore I equals zero or one I equals one four Display style I equals one L dots four that out of the four values V P one V P two V P three V P four Display style V Math BF P underscore one V Math BF P underscore two V Math BF P underscore three V Math BF P underscore four One must be one, while the other three must be zero. Cabello, extending an argument developed by Kernighan considered nine orthogonal bases, each basis corresponding to a column of the following table, in which the basis vectors are explicitly displayed. The bases are chosen in such a way that each projector appears in exactly two contexts, thus establishing functional relations between contexts. Now the no-go Theorem follows by making sure that the following is impossible, to place a value, either a 1 or a 0, into each compartment of the table above in such a way that a the value 1 appears exactly once per column, the other entries in the column being 0 
B equally colored compartments contain the same value, either both contain 1 or both contain 0. As it happens, all we have to do now is ask the question, how many times should the value 1 appear in the table? On the one hand, a implies that 1 should appear 9 times, there are 9 columns and a says that 1 should appear exactly once per column. On the other hand, B implies that one should appear an even number of times, the compartments all come in equally colored pairs, and B says that if one member of a pair contains one, then the other member must contain one as well. To repeat, A says that one appears nine times, while B says that it appears an even number of times. Since 9 is not even, it follows that a and b are mutually contradictory, no distribution of ones and zeros into the compartments could possibly satisfy both. The usual proof of Bell's theorem CHSH inequality can also be converted into a simple proof of the K's theorem in dimension at least 4. Bell's setup involves four measurements with four outcomes four pairs of a simultaneous binary measurement in each wing of the experiment and four with two outcomes the two binary measurements in each wing of the experiment, unaccompanied, thus 24 projection operators. Remarks on the K's theorem Contextually, in the Cochin Specker article, the possibility is discussed that the value attribution v a display style v math bf a may be context dependent, i.e., observables corresponding to equal vectors in different columns of the table need not have equal values because different columns correspond to different measurement arrangements. Since subquantum reality as described by the hidden variable theory may be dependent on the measurement context, it is possible that relations between quantum mechanical observables and hidden variables are just homomorphic rather than isomorphic. This would make obsolete the requirement of a context-independent value attribution. Hence, the Kays theorem only excludes non-contextual hidden variable theories. The possibility of contextuality has given rise to the so-called modal interpretations of quantum mechanics. Different levels of description be the Kays theorem the impossibility is proven of Einstein's assumption that an element of physical reality is represented by a value of a quantum mechanical observable. The value of a quantum mechanical observable refers in the first place to the final position of the pointer of a measuring instrument, which comes into being only during the measurement, and which, for this reason, cannot play the role of an element of physical reality. Elements of physical reality, if existing, would seem to need a subquantum hidden variable theory for their description rather than quantum mechanics. In later publications the Bell inequalities are discussed on the basis of hidden variable theories in which the hidden variable is supposed to refer to a subquantum property of the microscopic object different from the value of a quantum mechanical observable. This opens up the possibility of distinguishing different levels of reality described by different theories, which had already been practiced by Louis de Broglie. For such more general theories the Kays theorem is applicable only if the measurement is assumed to be a faithful one, in the sense that there is a deterministic relation between a subquantum element of physical reality and the value of the observable found on measurement. <laughs> Notes <laughs> External links Carsten Held, The Cochin Specker Theorem, Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, Asterisk, 1. S. Cochin and E. P. Specker, The Problem of Hidden Variables in Quantum Mechanics, Full Text, 2.